This podcast, brought to you by Anchor, is currently non-profit making and is based on the second edition course book on international history from 1870 to 1945 for Cambridge International AS Level History. To conclude this series on the League of Nations and international relations of the 1930s, I'll be looking at whether Britain was prepared for war by 1939. By 1934, Britain began to rearm in preparation for likely war in the east against Japan because they believed they would need to protect British territories in Asia, such as India. Surprisingly, Germany was not considered a threat in the long term, while Britain was focused on its empire. This lack of fear towards Germany and the understanding of their wish to rearm led to Britain signing the Anglo-German Naval Agreement in 1935. By 1936, war with Germany was increasingly likely. The Royal Navy was provided with new battleships and aircraft carriers. However, Britain was continuing its policy of appeasement, even after Germany remilitarised the Rhineland in 1936 and after the Anschluss with Austria in 1938. This is because Prime Minister Chamberlain believed that the British people wanted to do whatever was possible in order to avoid war. By March 1939, when Hitler invaded Czechoslovakia, it was obvious that appeasement had failed. Churchill had been proved to be correct all along, and Chamberlain finally conceded that Hitler's action against Czechoslovakia might be a step in the direction of an attempt to dominate the world. By 1939, Britain was committed to building nine battleships, 25 cruisers, 43 destroyers, and 19 submarines. It must be noted that the British military received less funding than that of Germany and the main aim of British naval expansion at this point was to defend itself and its empire. There was an arms race which took place from 1935 and 1939. During this period, Britain planned to spend more on armaments and they created new plans for the Royal Air Force. Meanwhile, Japan wanted greater sea power. Germany had begun building newer, faster and more agile models of aircraft. Italy also acquired and produced many airplanes. They had managed to build up their air force so it was able to challenge the finest in the world. In my opinion, Britain was never fully ready for war, while Germany was able to break all the terms of the Treaty of Versailles. The British government had adopted the 10-year rule, which was based on the belief that Britain would not engage in war for 10 years. As a result of this, it had cut its defence budget from £766 million to £102 million between 1919 and 1932. Britain spent £350 million, and Germany spent £1.6 billion on rearmament between 1937 and 1938. I think the policy of appeasement brought Hitler more time and resources for Germany's war effort, which resulted in Britain being underprepared, as Germany had been able to acquire many resources from the countries that they invaded. Despite the Royal Navy being provided with new battleships and increased investment in the military in the mid to late 1930s, Britain was now less prepared for war than Germany was. In 1938, the British Expeditionary Force was established in response to Germany's invasion of the Sudetenland. In the event of war, the BEF will be stationed in France to prevent Germany from threatening them. Britain continued its policy of appeasement while building up its navy and army. The primary goal was defence. By the time the war had broken out in 1939, Britain was not ready for an offensive war. It had 897,000 soldiers, compared to France's 5 million soldiers, while Germany had prepared 13 million men ready to serve in wartime, although Britain's navy was still slightly larger. The lack of a solid military was probably the reason why it took six months until actual direct conflict took place between Britain and Germany after Chamberlain had declared war on Germany in September 1939. With the beginning of the war, it was evident that the policy of appeasement had failed, and those who disagreed with it were proved to be correct to do so. Some of the people who opposed appeasement include Firstly, Foreign Secretary Anthony Eden, who resigned in February 1938 from Chamberlain's government after serving since 1935 as he disagreed with Chamberlain over appeasement in Abyssinia. He later served as Foreign Secretary under Winston Churchill and then succeeded Churchill as Prime Minister serving from 1955 to 1957. 
Secondly, Winston Churchill called for an increase in rearmament and opposed appeasement in terms of Germany. He supported an alliance of anti-fascist powers. Churchill served as Prime Minister following Chamberlain from 1940 to 1945, and then from 1951 to 1955, until he resigned and was succeeded by Anthony Eden. Thirdly, Duff Cooper was part of Chamberlain's government as the Secretary of State for War from 1935 to 1937, and then the first Lord of the Admiralty until his resignation as he opposed the Munich Agreement in September 1938. Finally, David Lowe was a cartoonist who attacked the right-wing press and opposed appeasement. History AS-level students will likely see and analyse many of his cartoons. Thank you for listening to the last episode of Series 9 of my podcast. I'll begin recording the next series soon, and it will be based on the unit China and Japan, predominantly from 1912 to 1945. This is the end of the podcast. Thank you for listening. Please consider using the links in the description below to leave a voice message for me, leave feedback for me, or visit my website which hosts additional revision material. Depending on which app you are listening to this on, you could also rate and review the podcast. Thank you.